Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, our neighboring country, Nigeria. Some few years ago, there was um, a lot of talk. Nigerians are complaining mm. that um, it's difficult to set up a business here. The requirements are difficult. Yeah. Do you agree with the Ghana government's policies on um, when it comes to trade, setting up businesses? I mean, we talk about setting up having a one million capital. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree with it? So nobody agrees with it, unfortunately. Even the people who have set it up think that it's a bit outrageous, and it's one of the things that I know they are working on. They've been doing that for a couple of years now. Hello, everybody. Yeah, welcome to Just for Women Africa. My name is Ola Liko. I'm also the founder of Just for Women Africa. And before we start our show, we'd like to give thanks to Tia Coffee House, that are located off the Patricia Road here in Accra. Um, if you come over to Ghana or you're in Accra, you need a nice, quiet, spacious place to be, have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Tia Coffee House is the place to be. And today on the show, we have with us Islam Sede. And uh, Isinam um, used to be the uh, SRC president of the University of Ghana and she has moved on after that. She's with us today telling us what has happened since she was um, SRC president. All right, Isinam, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, what is it about, what's it about leadership that inspired you? to be the SRC, want to, you know, contest for the SRC presidents while you're in the University of Ghana. Okay. Well, um, some people always have that school of thought that leadership is, you know, it's to, to you're born a leader and you know, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I have the, so within my growing up, I have experienced the opportunity to be the forefront okay. in different phases. So I'm the first born child. Uh, I grew up in, a, in the, a, a compound house, like a family home. Mm -hmm. um, I exhibited so much leadership. I just realized that it was something that came to me quite natural, but also not forgetting that I had to build on to whatever I thought was in it. You know? So I just liked to interact with people. I liked to support people, actualize the things that they want to. Because leadership for me, I think, has always been getting people to do what you want them to do as if they like to do it. And that is how you empower them, mm -hmm. but still get things done. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, the nucleus of my leadership journey has been that I have always liked to impact from the front. <laughs> okay. Some people might think, oh, you know, that's a bit too much and, and, and all of that. But I have particularly enjoyed to be in the hem of affairs, to sit around the table. Okay. Yeah. And that's why one of the reasons why I went in the first RC president. Yes, I see. Okay, as a student representative council president, uh, whilst you were um, elected into mm -hmm. office, did you have any issues as people saying, oh, they're not going to take, you know, um, instructions from a woman? Yes, I had I had some instances like that. In fact, yesterday I was speaking with a group of students at the university because it's 75 years at the university, mm -hmm. and they're celebrating. So they asked that I come through. And I said to them, I had people who, who said very horrible things um, while trying to express their dissatisfaction that I was president. Of course, I was contending against about eight other guys. Mm -hmm. So you would expect objection. You would ex expect that people wouldn't really like the idea that, you know, we're from this young lady and what does she want, you okay. know? So, yes, I had some objections. I had people who actually used my biological makeup to ridicule me. Wow, that's um, in, in, the, in very inappropriate manner, okay. but I had an agenda. I had a, I had an ambition, and that was my focus. It's like, you know, you sleeping behind a sound system, and somebody thinking you can't sleep because it's loud. It's because you are not sleeping. If you're sleepy, you can sleep next to a speaker <laughs> as loud as you can. You know. Yeah. So that was it for me. Um, yeah, so ob ob objections and very inappropriate thing. I don't want to share that on, on screen, but. They were quite bad things. Yeah, but I mean, I'd just like to know, just share one or two things, horrible oh, things so, that people so, said. So somebody said, oh, why would we let a girl who made straight come and sit in the, in the oh, office of the person? Somebody actually said that to you? Yeah, yeah I had some, some gentlemen say that to me. Um, very interesting things. Oh, I don't need a vagina here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice, that's not nice. <laughs> We, we, don't, we don't accept stuff like that. We just we don't say things like that to women. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite interesting. All right, so um, 
you were SLC president for how long? Four years? For a year. For a year. Yeah, so usually it's a year tenor. Um, okay. You're supposed to do all the magic within that one year. Okay. Yes. So we tried. We tried. We tried. We came, we saw, we conquered. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. All right. So you graduated in um, 2017. Yes, that's right. right. So what's what, what's um, Nami up to since 2017? Credit um, work Austria. I know you do a lot of trade with the um, German embassy. Yes. So yes, I've been I've been up to that a lot. Right from when I left school, I started doing trade advisory. Okay. So I, I even did that for my national service. Okay. In 2017. Um, it seems a very short period, but a lot has happened with me in that period when I was away, like when I was in, when I got into the world. Okay. Um, so basically, my line of work as a consultant has been to support investment into, into Ghana and some of the sub regions. So I have worked within the Nigerian space. I've done some work within the Benin space, um, Dubai, mm -hmm. and the UK. Mm -hmm. And a few other places. So essentially, to encourage companies, organisations, institutions that want to enter the emerging market, which Ghana happens to be one, in setting up here, uh, bringing investment down here, mm -hmm. and very recently to support with um, job creation for the Ghanaian youth. Okay. So I've been able to attach a special twist to it through the the GIZ or the German Federation, who I consult for okay. now. No. Okay. So what's 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 like the trade um, industry like in Ghana in Africa? Is Ghana really busy with trade? Do a lot of people wanting to come into Ghana to do a lot of trade? Yes. So for a good time now, up until the the, the currency has been acting very interesting lately, we have had a lot of business interest. I think that the the key sex spaces in, in Africa Ghana has been one of the places that businesses want to set up here. You know, when it comes to um, the technology space, when it comes to service space, when it comes to business outsourcing, when it comes to manufacturing and uh, real estate, Ghana has been one of the places that a lot of businesses look to in terms of migrating here to, to set up. And so my line of work is to initiate most of these things and also support them when they come in. Okay. As much as I can. I mean, it's 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 a it's a broad space. Ghana has an existing trade policy that is even being edited now as we speak. So okay. to fit into the WTO standards, to tweak it to our current economic status and all that, you know, because we are part of the WTO. The WTO makes room for some framework with which every country who is a member should trade. Okay. You know, so the the continental free trade area also has come in. Ghana is hosting the Secretariat, which is like the biggest thing. Okay. And so they look at the policy aspect of trading within the continent or within the sub region. Okay. So there are a few there are different angles to it. There are some people who also do the trade where they do the import and export as well. Yeah. There are people who also do the trade regarding the the legal aspects where um, what what are the policies and how are people flaunting on it and um, our harmonized system codes, are people abiding by it and stuff like that. And the harmonized system basically is like the, the HS code okay. where um, it signifies what things people can trade in between countries within the Ghana space okay. and stuff like that. So yeah, that's not to go so technical, those are some of the things that has been the homework which you know Ghana has been attached to when it comes to trade. Why, why is it that a lot of um, <coughs> countries or individuals want to come down to Ghana to do trade? So the first thing is the peace and sustainability of, of the country. So mm -hmm. Ghana is comparatively very, very peaceful when it comes to uh, our political atmosphere, when it comes to religious atmosphere, because a lot of countries have issues with peace when it comes to you know, diverse religions, yeah. um, ter terrorist attacks, and but we have been very fortunate and so if anybody is coming into a country, they look at first the level of stability that exists in the political space of the country. Now our advancement when it comes to technology, data access, um, infrastructure is also one of the big things that has helped Ghana as well. You That's know, yes, because we 
we are about what a little on the north of 30 million but if you look at the advancements as compared to some of our neighboring countries you could see that there because there are big companies that have come here there twitter microsoft all these countries look here you know google they, they look here they they have identified that within the west african place mm -hmm. ghana happens to be one of the spaces that you know they can be able to to measure progress with the help of all the infrastructure and all the apparatus that have been set up. Okay, all right. But I spoke to a couple of investors, and um, one thing that always kept on coming to mind when they're talking, they say that Ghana is expensive, um, electricity is expensive, mm -hmm. transportation is expensive. All those things are expensive, but investors still want to come down to Ghana to invest. Yeah. Why is that? So sometimes there is the comparative advantage, there is the competitive advantage. The, um, a company can look and say, look, if I produce, maybe I do a manufacturing plant in, in America, mm -hmm. maybe my access to the raw materials will be a bit further if I compare it, I think that it will still be more expensive than if I come here. But, so even though there might be some hiking prices and all that, usually what they do is they compare. So, okay, would I rather outsource? So some companies come here and then they set up and they actually outsource their services or their product. Some people do so there, that's why there's a free zone. So the free zones board ensures that people who just, who don't want to feed the local market, don't feed the local market. They just do whatever they have to do here and expatriate whatever the, whatever the outcome is to another country. So yes, things could be expensive, but maybe for some of these companies, compared to where they're coming from, might be cheaper. Okay. In terms of factors of production. Factors of production. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, our neighboring country, Nigeria. Some few years ago, there was um, a lot of talk. Nigerians were complaining mm. that um, it's difficult to set up a business here. The requirements are difficult. Yeah. Do you agree with the Ghana government's policies on um, when it comes to trade, setting up businesses? I mean, we're talking about setting up having a one million capital. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree with it? So nobody agrees with it, unfortunately, even the people who have set it up think that it's a bit outrageous. And it's one of the things that I know they're working on. They've been doing that for a couple of years now. We're still waiting to see how it, uh, it comes up. Um, but there's a benefit of being a part of the West African you know, community, which is why something like the AFTA has come, the, the African Continental Free Trade Area, that will reframe the policy around trade among neighboring countries within the sub-region. Okay. So there are a lot of things, trade and services, uh, tariffs, the, the, you know, all these benchmarks that have been set in place. Now things are going to change a lot when it comes to transportation of goods and services. There are a lot of things that are put in place now that are being cooked up, okay. you know, by the ECOWAS, the AU, um, and, and all these other international agencies. Um, the requirements even for countries that are not within the African continent seem a bit hard. And it is because at every point, every country, so sometimes some people also do not understand. So for instance, if you are a manufacturing company or you're an agrarian company, sometimes you have even some waivers when it comes to some of these things. So if you are not part of maybe the manufacturing and you decide to come um, and, and government says that I need you to prove that you have about $500,000, Sometimes it just means that prove that in terms of your um, your infrastructure they are going to use, so it, your equipment, your you know all the things that make it up. If you are able to cost it to that too, but yes, I, I do understand you. It becomes a bit difficult um, because the requirements are probably very high, and it doesn't allow companies that are small, small, to be able to even scale up in their various destinations and enter the other markets. So you would find that people are using Ghanaians to face or to front businesses because they don't meet the requirement. And when that happens, we don't even properly reflect which companies are Ghanaian and which companies are not Ghanaian. Okay. You know, if you go to the Registrar General's Department, there are so many instances like that where you go, you take a name and you go and they're like, oh, these are the directors. And then you look at it and then the directors don't even have any shares in the business because they're just fronting. And you have issues where after companies have become big, some of these local people who sometimes don't even know anything about these structures come and say, no, you put me on your, your, your certificate as a director. Now I need money. 
<laughs> what the government is trying to do. Yeah, so that is what I know that uh, government is trying to do to, to salvage the requirement situation. Requirement We're all looking situation. to see what happens. No, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about the African Free Trade Act. The, the area, yeah, area, the continental free trade area. So, for viewers who are watching, let's just ex um, can you just explain. So after it's rectified and all that, so does that mean all the agreements within um, ECOWAS and East Africa, wherever within the regions, will be um, cancelled and we're just going to the Africa Tra Free, Free Trade Act? No, 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 no. Okay, so the Continental Free Trade Area is is um, is born from the organisations that we have. Okay. It's not separate. They are not exclusive. Okay. So it's like a secretariat that is going to. In make sure that all the policies and all the practices surrounding trade among the members are properly coordinated. It's like a framework for all the countries that have ratified that have been a part of it. Okay. Right? And it's just to push the African agenda okay. on different fronts, including okay. trade. Including trade. So, yeah, so it's a free trade area that has been set up. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah. So now there will be trade in goods and services. There will be ease in doing stuff across all these countries okay. and those are the things that that, that that i'm saying i'm explaining it in you know the basic terms as much as i can okay so it's like a, a framework that has been set up right the, the african union you know the which is like the big the, the echo was there you know all those so all the different different sub regional sub regions form under so there is a sad there, there is a all the commissar all these organizations come under the the area understand and it is basically to just help in facilitating trade within africa basically basically yes. okay that's nice that's good to know so how does ISNA fit into this well so i had i had some competency training on the after with the, the unec and um, it was for me to understand what really is going on because i realized that when it comes to trade it's like it's become a talk shop especially with africa today we are talking about this we want to do this we want to do that but we're not really seeing the foothold of what we want to do. So one of the reasons why I took a personal interest in understanding what the structure is and why we need to do that is because some of us would love that investment and trade expands for Ghana as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's one of the things that I really am passionate about. Okay. That how can we make the African continent very bi viable for trade? and in all forms and in all spaces okay. you know so that is where i come in where i'm very passionate about it and i also want to be able to contribute my quota okay and how i do that is supporting investment all right. and eventually helping to create jobs through this investment that i've come okay all right okay so we're about to round up the interview um are we looking at the next world trade <laughs> Director General. <laughs> we'll see how things go. I mean, I'm still learning. Um, the angle that I have picked myself from, I'm going to need to enter the whole international trade space properly. Then I can be able to climb up a ladder. But now, it's something that I really like to do. I might pick a focal point, career-wise, that, that will make me focus on, on the trade. So, maybe I might be doing international law, international trade law. I might be doing... Um, Anything, you know, I might even be a professor in that, I might be a doctor in that. I'm seeing it. <laughs> but it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a space that I, I find very fascinating. That you don't find a lot of young people not, like I enjoying know. it. Enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, what's your advice to women out there who see it as a man's world, they complain that there's a barrier, they get sexually harassed? they say there's no money to set up businesses and stuff like that. Yeah. What's your advice to women out there? I think that the, the average woman now is empowered. For me, it's about your access to the instruments that exist, the agencies that exist. Mm -hmm. If you sit in your room and you lock your door, you won't have access to things that you think you want. So my one advice is for women to go out there. If there's a table, sit around the table. If there are opportunities, go for it. Because what happens is that you don't, and then the whole performance index of women around the world still keep dwindling because only you decided to still sit down. But if everybody goes out, everybody tries to reach what they can be able to do, we would have a greater chance at recording speed, not only for a world record, but 
for individual progress. Mm -hmm. If you stay, if you come out and I see you and there's something we can do together, we will do it. But if you're not available and accessible, I won't know that there's something that you do that makes you stand out. So yes, a woman in this kind of disposition is empowered and all they have to do is to ac access all the empowerment tools that exist. Okay, that, that, I do agree, this is done in one place, never know what's, no, what's going to happen. No. There's, a, there's a local adage that says that if you sit at one place, you sit on your thing. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay, so we're about to bring the um, interview to a close. Uh, we'll just play a little game, just before, before we round up. Okay. You, just, you get to choose one. All right. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Beyonce or Cardi B? Hey. Cardi B. <laughs> These are like apples and oranges. So. I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm a music person, so Beyonce. Beyonce. I like her. But I love Cardi B because she's like... <laughs> <laughs> I like her cockiness. I, like, I, just, I just like her personality, very free-spirited. Sometimes you have to be like that, you know? Sometimes it's just losing up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um... Denzel Washington or Barack Obama? Oh, Denzel Washington. Why? How the girl seems to love Denzel Washington? Yeah, mm. maybe we, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Barack Obama, he, he came, he saw he conquered. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, let's see. Whitney Houston or Ifia? Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Yeah. I think that was the wrong comparison, yeah. but, I think, <laughs> but I think Afia was is getting there. Yeah, no, Afia is good. I yeah. mean, like, off of the like, at a snap of a finger, everybody would say with him. Yeah. Everybody knows, like, worldwide. Even if the person was Ghanaian, you know. Imagine I was not Ghanaian. I, would, uh -huh. yeah, I wouldn't probably. Yeah. Wouldn't probably. All right. Okay. This is the last one. This is the last one. Um, Davido whiskey. Hey. <laughs> The video. The video. Yeah, maybe because I follow him. The only Nigerian big artist that I follow. Okay. Yeah. One last one, then we'll just bring the show to a close. Um, wedges or heels? Heels. Women seem to love heels. Why not wedges or I don't see wedges around lately anymore. I used to like wedges. Okay. I used to have these really long. If I'm wearing wedges, they have to be like very long. Okay. But I don't see them around anymore. You don't see them around? No. Yeah. And for a corporate woman, the heel does it for you. I know. Yeah. All right, Esteban, thanks a lot for coming up for the show. Thank you, thank and, you, uh, thank you. you all the best. Exciting. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I, I enjoy the, the interview. Yeah. Okay, everybody, you're watching Just Roaming Africa, and do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe, tell a friend who knows a friend about Just Roaming Africa, and to the next show from Esteban and I, it will be bye. <laughs>